going to um, run you through an update of our Los Azulis project. Um, the photograph here, that uh, wise old gentleman in the right-hand side there is standing in McEwen Mining property uh, on the frontier between uh, Argentina and Chile. So I think that will move on. Um, this is my second year of presenting to you at the company AGM with an update of the excellent progress that we have made at our sleeping giant Los Azules copper project in Argentina. This year, I'm going to keep it short and we just have three subjects. Uh, most important of all is the first one, what we've been doing since the last AGM. And I'm using that as the timeline. Um, so we're talking about what we've done in the last 12 months up until today. So moving on, for those already um, familiar with Los Azules, you will have seen this before. Um, otherwise, just to refresh, um, Los Azules is in Western Argentina. Um, we're in an area of significant mining activity we have the huge Los Palambres uh, copper mine. I think that's the fourth largest copper mine in the world um, to the south, along with the undeveloped El Pachon resource. And to the north, we have the well-known Pascualama and Veladero uh, mine, resources and mines. And there's quite a lot of other smaller mines, both in operation and planned, that aren't shown on this map. What's important to note from this map is the proximity of Los Azules to the international border, and more importantly, the fact that we're very close to the Pacific coast and the port of Coquimbo is just 144 kilometers away. Um, we, as I mentioned, McEwen Mining owns the lands up to the border with Chile, and we're fortunate within the property to have an excellent low level or low altitude pass over into Chile. We've driven a exploration track up to that pass and it's very simple crossing into Chile and very simple to constru construct a road down through Chile to connect to the existing roads and highways that connect to the port of Coquimbo, just 144 kilometers away. Right now that 144 kilometers, if we had a track in, would take about four or five hours to drive. In an improved condition, and you can imagine, it would probably take quite a bit less. The next slide. This is a list of our achievements since the last AGM. Now, in my opinion, that's a very impressive list, delivered by a very small but very focused project team. Each of the first three items on that list are major project achievements in themselves. Now, by that I'm referring to the Los Azules 2017 PEA, which we published after the AGM in October last year, that defined Los Azules um, copper project as a top 25 world copper producer and lowest cost quartile producer. That's both of those at the same time and it was going to provide a 20% IRR and because of high early grades, had a debt payback period of just 3.6 years. That's impressive. Item two on that list is our project de-risking. So having delineated the project in the PEA, we now had to go and prove it in the field by doing a lot of site work and a lot of engineering. This year at Los Azules, during the snow-free period from, or uh, snow at snow-free access period, uh, from January to April, we've drilled 70 geotechnical boreholes, performed seven, 22 seismic traverses, completed a lot of geological mapping, and undertaken photogrammetry with drones over our proposed new northern access route. We can now confirm that all the project facility sites, installations and infrastructure that we defined and described in the 2017 PEA have all been proven viable. All have been de-risked. Okay. 
item three, our environmental baseline work was completed just last month. Each year since 2011, Los Azules has had a team of experts go to site and perform all the necessary environmental baseline monitoring work. And just two weeks ago in uh, Mendoza, we appointed Knight Peasold, a uh, well-known Canadian-owned um, consultant, to commence the formation of our EIA permit application. So, I touched earlier on the Northern Access Road. Item four, this achievement of this Northern Access Route is understated. It's going to be project transformational. The current challenges we have at Los Azules relate to seasonal road access over snow-blocked high elevation passes. This issue, which is a major issue to overcome, has now disappeared, creating this northern access at low elevation, under the snow line, mostly through easy country, is compelling. In effect, Los Azules is now just 120 kilometers up the road and you can go there any time of the year, or it will be once we've put this road through. Logically, we're also going to align our power transmission line to be alongside this same low elevation road. And it's going to be a much shorter line and a more robust, reliable solution. Finally, the Northern Access Road also delivers us with new, um, sorry, zero community interactions. Our entire road access will not pass by a single dwelling anywhere on the route. Item five, what else have we achieved? Is our proposed access road through to Chile and the existing port of Coquimbo. Coquimbo, courtesy of Mitsui, is an existing copper concentrate export exporting facility. Has all the storage sheds already there, all the permits already in place. Mitsui have kindly decided to move to a port close to their mine, vacating their facilities and inevitably the Port of Coquimbo is extremely keen to sign up Los Azules. And at this point in time, we've already exchanged memorandums of understanding and we're on our way to developing a contractual term sheet. Item six, I can only share with you that these are diverse possibilities that are extremely interesting. They include integrating Los Azules with other mines in the area, in particular, um, the one I mentioned, El Pachon, to the south, but there are also other opportunities. And there is also some uh, potential opportunities to integrate our new northern access road and the low, level, low elevation pass that we have into Chile and to revise an existing proposed international tolled highway to actually pass by Los Azules. It's very conceptual. We've got a bit of work to do on that, which I'll hopefully be updating you on with positive outcomes at the next meeting. Item seven, after the project de-risking, we're now liberated to move into preliminary engineering. It's happening. So for the next 12 months, what are we going to do before the next AGM in 2019? Well. That list up there you can see now is our priority work list. It needs a lot of work to make it happen, but it's our intention to make it happen. Our priorities there are the first two items in particular, the EIA permit and pioneering our northern access road. And finally, this is our project master plan. The arrow at the bottom always uh, attracts some interest, as indeed it should. You can see there the end of H1 in 2020. It's going to be a need to make a decision. We're racing towards that now. We've made brilliant access um, progress this year. I'm sure we're going to have another brilliant year next year. The sleeping giant's waking up. Thank you.